For decades, November has rarely delivered cyclones to Australia. Until now. Just hours ago, a tropical low erupted over waters nearly two degrees warmer than average, forcing experts to issue high-risk alerts. Could this early season monster storm explode into disaster? Or are we witnessing the start of a new climate era? The answer lies in how this system formed so fast and what happens next. The Timor Sea, at this moment, holds more energy than almost any November on record. Sea surface temperatures are running 1.2 to 1.7 degrees Celsius above the seasonal norm, measured at 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, creating a vast reserve of heat that acts as fuel for any developing storm. But it is not just the surface that is warm. Oceanographers confirm deep layer warmth extends well below 50 meters, ensuring that even as winds churn the upper waters, the system draws from a deep, uninterrupted energy source. This rare thermal profile means the usual limits on storm growth are gone. Above the sea, the atmosphere is primed as well. The annual monsoon trough, which typically activates closer to December, arrived weeks early, injecting instability and encouraging the formation of low pressure systems. Meteorologists point to this combination, record ocean heat and an early monsoon, as the reason a tropical low could organize so rapidly. The basin, usually quiet in November, is now loaded with the key ingredients for cyclogenesis, and every new satellite pass shows a system feeding on conditions rarely seen at this time of year. Australia's collective memory still carries the scars of Cyclone Tracy. In December 1974, what began as a small, late-season tropical low turned catastrophic overnight. Tracy struck Darwin with winds measured at 217 kilometers per hour before the instruments failed. Some estimates put gusts even higher. The storm flattened more than two-thirds of the city's buildings, left over 40,000 people homeless, and forced the largest peacetime evacuation in Australian history. The devastation was so complete that, decades later, Tracy remains a reference point for every cyclone warning issued across the north. In 2011, Cyclone Yassi tested Queensland's resilience on a different scale. Yassi, a Category 5 system, brought winds near 285 kilometers per hour and a storm core that stretched hundreds of kilometers, devastating communities from the coast far inland. These events redefined what Australians expect from the tropics. Rapid escalation, sudden turns, and impacts that can overwhelm even modern defenses. Each early season anomaly now triggers a heightened sense of alert among meteorologists and the public, shaped by the hard lessons of storms that arrived before the calendar said they should. Infrared loops from Himawari 9 are tracking a storm that refuses to slow down. In the last 12 hours, satellite frames reveal a dense core of convection bursting over the Timor Sea, with cloud top temperatures plunging well below minus 80 degrees Celsius, a classic warning sign for meteorologists. Coastal wave buoys near Bathurst Island report a sharp rise in swell, confirming the energy that is now pushing water onto the Northern Territory shoreline. Automated pressure sensors show a steady drop with barometers falling by 10 hectopascals in just 24 hours, an acceleration not typical for November. Inside the Bureau of Meteorology Darwin office, the lead forecaster reviews ensemble model runs, access TC, HWRF, and ECMWF all indicate a tightening circulation and a deepening low-level core. Probability charts now place the odds of cyclone classification between 40 and 55% within the next two days. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center spread echoes this uncertainty, with some tracks aiming for the top-end coast, and others veering toward open water. Yet all models agree the risk is no longer speculative. At 3 p.m. local time, the Bureau of Meteorology officially escalates the system status to high for tropical cyclone development. The decision is grounded in persistent convective symmetry, a surge of deep layer moisture and ocean heat depth rarely measured at this time of year. The public bulletin is clear. This is not a cyclone yet, but the atmosphere is primed for rapid change. Every new data point, from pressure drops to satellite signatures, points to a system flirting with the operational thresholds for cyclone genesis. On Melville Island, a Tiwi Ranger stands ankle deep in salt water, phone camera in hand, capturing the tide as it pushes past the mangroves and floods the track behind him. The water is higher than anyone remembers for November, and elders nearby recall stories from the days before Cyclone Tracy. 
about sudden surges in the sky changing color without warning. Drones fly overhead, tracking the line where the beach used to be. In the past 24 hours, the sand has retreated, and makeshift barriers of driftwood and netting are all that hold back the next wave. At the Bathurst Island substation, engineers work quickly, sealing cable trenches and checking for signs of saltwater intrusion. An alarm blares as sensors detect rising salinity near the base of the main transformer. Power crews know the risks. If salt water reaches the core, outages could sweep across the island and leave homes without light or communications. In Darwin, maintenance teams shut down substations in the lowest lying districts, hoping to prevent a repeat of the blackouts that followed Cyclone Marcus in 2018. Offshore, a platform manager scans the horizon from the control deck. The rig is under yellow alert. Non-essential work has stopped and helicopter flights are on standby in case evacuation becomes necessary. The manager checks the incident log, wind readings rising, barometric yeah. pressure falling, and the first signs of long period waves rocking the structure. Every decision weighs safety against the cost of shutting down production. The manager says, if we evacuate and the storm fizzles, millions are lost. If we wait and it hits, we risk disaster. On shore and at sea, the warnings are no longer just numbers, they are lived in real time, shaping choices that could mean the difference between inconvenience and catastrophe. Viral clips on TikTok and Facebook claim a Category 5 cyclone is already spinning over the Timor Sea. These videos show spiral cloud bands in Himawari 9 satellite loops, add dramatic soundtracks, and stamp the footage with fake warnings. But the official data tells a different story. No agency, neither the Bureau of Meteorology nor the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, has declared a cyclone, let alone anything near Category 5. What is actually visible on satellite is a developing tropical low, with strong convection but none of the organized structure or wind speeds needed for cyclone status. Another rumor gaining traction is the threat of a tsunami. Posts warn that coastal communities face an incoming wave, confusing storm surge with seismic tsunamis. In reality, storm surge is a rise in sea level caused by wind and pressure, not an underwater earthquake. There is no tectonic activity linked to this storm, and no tsunami alerts have been issued. Social media algorithms amplify these false alarms. Posts using terms like monster, unprecedented, and explosion spike in engagement, while accurate updates from meteorologists struggle to keep pace. The best defense is to check official bulletins and look for time-stamped, source-verified updates before sharing or reacting to dramatic claims. Forecast models now outline four distinct outcomes for the next 72 hours, each with its own risks and consequences. The first scenario sees the system stall over the Timor Sea, where an unexpected surge in wind shear or dry air intrusion could prevent cyclone formation. In this case, coastal communities would endure days of relentless rain and moderate flooding, but the threat of destructive winds or major surge would remain low. The second scenario involves gradual consolidation. Here, the tropical low slowly organizes, pressure drops, and a Category 1 cyclone forms as it approaches the Northern Territory coast. Winds strengthen and Darwin or the Taiwi Islands could face coastal flooding, minor wind damage, and rising river levels, especially in flood-prone areas like the Adelaide River and Daly River. A more dangerous third scenario hinges on rapid intensification. If ocean heat and atmospheric conditions align, the system could escalate quickly to Category 2 or Category 3 strength. This would mean a sharp plunge in central pressure, a tightly wound core, and a severe storm surge, potentially topping two meters above normal tide. Widespread wind damage, power outages, and landslides would become likely across the top end. The final scenario shifts the threat west. The system deepens over open water and tracks toward the Kimberley, sparing the Northern Territory, but putting Western Australia coastline and offshore operations in the crosshairs. Ports and energy facilities could see high waves, flooding, and dangerous conditions, with supply chains and aviation disrupted far from the original storm center. Each pathway draws from the latest ensemble spreads and surge models, giving authorities and residents a concrete set of possibilities to prepare for as the hours count down. Right now, ocean temperatures off Northern Australia are warmer than ever recorded in November, and storms respond to that heat. As climate signals shift cyclone season earlier, Early warnings become survival tools, not just forecasts. 
The next hour could define the next disaster. Stay alert and stay informed.